<laughs> Welcome back to the Bobcast. Today we got a special homie in the studio. He DJs from Philly all across Pennsylvania. Please welcome DJ Rambo. What's up, guys? Thank you for having me, Bob. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, you just experienced what I like to call a Bob technical failure. There's many of them on these podcasts. We started the podcast and I wasn't recording, so then we had to start over. Hey, man, technical failures are all part of life, so don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. As a DJ, how much technical failure do you experience? Oh, uh, I mean, it depends on the day. Serato is my main uh, DJ software. Mm -hmm. Any DJ that's watching us would know Serato can be painful. Right. Um, so what do you do on this Serato? Because you got to remember, DJ Rambo, that these cameras reach all the way to the GOM. The GOM means village in Gujarati, the language of the Patel. Okay. So sometimes you'll say a word, and I won't know, <laughs> and they definitely won't know. Yeah, so um, if you think of a laptop, and laptops all have software, Serato is the software that mm. connects and stores your music. So, okay. so your music's basically in this software, and then you plug into a DJ, like control board, mm -hmm. vinyls, whatever, and that's how... You can then mix the tracks. Okay. Uh, but software, the software itself is just called Serato. Mm. And what kind of technical difficulties do you ever face on a Serato? Uh, it can be pretty funny. Um, How funny? Tell so me about funny, DJ you're, Rambo. You went to Penn State. We both went to Penn <laughs> yes, State. Yes, we did. Yeah, we um, are, I'm baby. Sh sure you remember uh, Indigo. Uh-huh. I used to DJ there. Is Indigo there anymore? It's actually rebranded. It's now called The Basement. <laughs> It's still up there functioning, but it is now the basement. Okay. Um, before Indigo, if any alumni are watching, it was Mr. C's and mm. Players. Um, but, yeah, so two times I was headlining there, and and uh, Serato just decided to up and crash. Um, it's packed dance floor, everybody's going, and then mm. just nothing. Just doof, music was out. Yeah. And, you and then you're that. scrambling. Yeah, right. And like what what do you do in that scramble? Like do you have like a backup like iPod or So, it depends. I typically nowadays like to have a plugged in phone. Um the two times I was there, I actually didn't. I should have. Uh so that's my mistake. What do you mean plug in phone? So the what they use up in State College used to be uh two CDJs uh -huh. and a mixer. CDJs are basically like control disc jockeys. Sure. CD disc jockey. Um and you can plug directly into them with phones as well as a second option instead of just your laptop. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do that. Um, I forgot to do that. I was just so amped to be going on uh, as a headliner there that I didn't do that. I I've, I've was relying solely on Serato, and that's my mistake. Yeah. Yo, so, um, like, aside from this, like, yeah, having this problem, this was, like, your first headlining, like, your... It was my my first time headlining there. Um, went fine, um, but okay. it was a, it was a summer session. It was a summer session, oh, so this was like so. actually really more matter. like okay. headlining summer session can be a lot of fun. Uh, typically, you actually get like bridal parties in there. Oh, you no get way. like yeah, you get brides. I've had people come right after their wedding to there. Wow, over summer session. But this was the two times it crashed. Of course, was like big weekends and mm -hmm. big headlining like an was, arts fest or something yeah. yeah arts fest i actually did champs before Ooh. back before they had the stage i did a champs arts fest right after they opened and i was djing actually above the bar mm. there's a little catwalk up there yeah, if you're ever yeah, in there and you look and i was djing up there and it was hype dude man. so like all right so you're like doing some headlining spots like that's my dream i have yet to headline even feature, you know, even open, yet to host. Hey, man, you'll get there. No worries. I know. I know. But it's okay. It's okay. So, like, what is, like, the beginning? Like, what do you, what is, like, the beginning for you guys? Like, I hit an open mic. What do you hit? For DJs, um, I was lucky um, to start in State College where I did. Uh, Alex Nepa. Shout out DJ Alex Nepa. Yo, shout out Alex. And uh, DJ Cassius. Mm -hmm. Both kind of took me under their wing, showed me the ropes. Um, before I was DJing, though... I got my start out at actually uh, the State College Spikes, if you remember them. Kind the, of, yeah. The summer like, baseball team. Right, yeah. I was going to yeah. say like some type of sports. I did an internship there because um, I majored in communication, so mm. audio, video production. And I did the audio there. And uh, the one day James Franklin came through, 
with his audio guy, PJ Mullen at the mm-hmm. time, who's now down in Rutgers. Um, and they, they were looking for a new intern to do some audio for Penn State sports. So I started out there, got introduced to different people, so on and so forth. JD, one of the audio guys, needed a DJ for Inferno. Mm-hmm. And I, that just happened to be for Alex Nepa's company. And that's how it all started. Wow. But for as for your request with open mics, um, Cassius kind of would let me open for him at Indigo. Oh, that's So great. that's how I would learn. And then from there, Alex would plug me into different events. Mm. And it just kind of starts to roll after that. Is there a DJ open mic, though, like where you go to a bar and just every DJ gets five minutes? Oh, no, that would be that would be interesting. <laughs> um, I could see that being a real mess at the same time. There's not something like that. It's more who you know and who will get you yeah. in the spots. It's it's very political in that sense. Mm-hmm. Yo, DJ Rambo, have you ever seen a Kill Tony? Kill Tony, the DJ? No, no. So it's a comedy show and it's run by this uh, comedian named Tony Henchcliffe, right? And basically, they pull names, like a bunch of comedians that night come up and sign up, and they pull names out of a hat, and you get to come up and do one minute, and then afterwards, like, Tony and his, like, whatever gang he has that night, um, gets to roast you, or just, like, ask you questions, like, learn about you, right? Yeah. And uh, it's just, like, one minute, and some people come up and do real good, and they get, like, spots on, like, shows, and, like, oh, some yeah? people come up and bomb so hard. And, like, I feel like this would be, like, a good... Yo, you, you're like a guy comes up a DJ and does like one minute, whatever he got, boom, 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 <laughs> like whatever he got, like you know, like it's go, like one of those big like EDM festivals. I I think I know what you're talking about. There's stuff like that. It's more like a DJ battle. Uh-huh. Um, it's not like an open mic per no. se. There's there's DJ battles where yeah. you get a certain time frame to go in, do your scratches, mm-hmm. do whatever you got to do, show them yeah. that you got it, do routines. That's strictly like DJ to DJ. Yeah. Like, no, we got to do this show. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It'll be real fun because you have the DJ expert, and <laughs> I know how to rip off Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> we could definitely <laughs> get away with that. Then we could definitely do that. I'll judge it. I'll judge it for sure. Yeah. No, there's no like uh, judging like uh, your win or lose out of the whole. Night, oh no, right? I know, but I'll, yeah, I'll tell yeah, you yeah, if they're yeah, doing yeah, good. I'll be like, oh, that's like, sick. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. That'll be a fun time. Mm. Have you ever bombed? Like besides, have I like, bombed? T- besides like technical problems, like that's obviously a bomb when the music stops. But like, just people have been like, "Oh, this sucks." Like you're not. Like, I've vibing definitely with the- had. I wouldn't say bombed. I've had sets where I'm not happy with, mm. but I still have people dancing. Yeah. What does that um, mean? Like you're not happy? What is, like, yeah. Explain this to me. So I'm I'm very much I like to have a pack dance floor. Right. Um, I like to have people dancing, having a pack dance floor, but there's times where. Especially um, at certain bars where it's really hard to read the crowd. Yeah. And I'm sure you've had that with comedy where like yeah. you're just not getting a response. Mm-hmm. And those are just assessments when I'm not getting a response that I, I'm just not happy with. Because yeah. then I, I feel like I didn't do what I needed to do. I had one lady at Great American come in who just kept requesting a 50 cent song over and over. And it was not going to fly. What and song? Do you remember? It was. No, I actually don't remember it. It was a 50 cent song, but it was kind of like. Like it, it was a real hit or miss, but I already had the dance floor going, right, right, and I right. thought it would be a miss. And so she sent up her five friends, one after the other, Damn. to each request a song, while standing in front of me with said group. Mm. And I'm like, "All right, you guys are just pissing me off. I'm yeah. not playing." It. Like uh. to, I got to the point where I was like, "I'm not playing it just because you're pissing me off." Yeah. And they just stood there and were just like shouting at me mm. the whole night. I was like, "Just go away. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's bad. let let me DJ and you guys just drink." If it if I'll play your song, like if you just let me go, but sending standing in front of me, sending one after the other, nah, yeah. get that out. Yeah, I, I see. I consider that like a heckler. Oh, it's right? it was total heckling. Yeah. But then she she then went on uh, Yelp and posted a review. Yeah. She's one of those people. I guess it's like really hard to bomb unless you're like playing like um, if you really misread the crowd, right? Like if you're at like a like a racist white folk convention <laughs> and you play like Bollywood music, right? Like that's really, oh, you, if you're a racist white folk thing, just throw on some <laughs> hip hop Bollywood and you'll, you'll bomb for sure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like this is an <laughs> extreme example, but like, it's really like as, as long as you're like just playing, like do you ever, what's your go to like, all right, this one is definitely going to maybe work. Like when you're desperate, what's your go to? When song? I'm desperate. Oh man. <clears throat> really depends. Um, I'd either have to say Fergalicious, mm-hmm. um, that 
usually gets responses out of the girls. Yeah. Which is a real reason why it's a go to if you're really looking for a response. Yeah. Throw on some old Fergie. Um, or some Flow Rider. Flow Rider. Um, classic Flow Rider like Florida. <laughs> yeah, Florida. Throw on some Florida out there. <laughs> Yo, when I like when I first discovered, like someone was like, you know, it, Cause he was. It took young. me a minute to realize right, that yeah. too. We were young when yeah. it came out, like hit that first one. So it was, it was like, like middle school, I think. Something like exactly. And like as a middle school, you're just like, wow, flow ride, and you don't put two and two uh, together, and you're like, oh. Someone's like Florida, and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I had. Uh, it's like someone come up and being like, yo, play some Florida. Okay, Florida Georgia Line. No, Florida. And then you're like, figure out it's flow ride. You put uh, it together. You're like, oh, okay. I see what you're saying now, mm-hmm. but you got that entirely wrong. And I never even realized that was his name. Yeah. We were so dumb back in the day. Man, I'm still dumb. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to go out there and say I'm smart. I'm just older. Oh, experience. Experience. That's what I learned working in manufacturing. Like, you go up to, like, some older people and, like, you sometimes just say older. Like, that older person over there and then the, the person you're talking to is, like, appalled. They're like, <gasps> How can you call her old? And you're like, I, I, I she's not like a 22 year old. She's 56. Like, I'm 20 something. She's close to 60. She's yeah, old. Yeah. <laughs> Someone told me an older gentleman, I think John Retruti or Mike Paley, both great guys. Uh, experienced is the term to use. It's smart. It can't really be offensive. It might catch somebody, take somebody a couple seconds to. It's a compliment. Actually. Yeah. Figure out what you mean by it, but yeah, I got you. I got you. It's actually a compliment, like your experience. Experience in life, yeah. All I'm trying to do is get experience on my resume. That's all I'm trying to do. I think that's what we're all trying to do. (laughs) These started jobs are looking for more experience than I've been alive anymore. Well, in reality, it's like I, I'm, I'm catching up now. Like, you know, the starter jobs are asking for five years. I'm like, yeah, I got five years now. I'm but a- do you want to be a starter after five years in the industry? Are no. you still a starter at that point? No, dude, that's why I'm doing this. I'm just trying to get canceled, DJ Rambo. <laughs> oh, speaking of Fergalicious, what did you think about Jack Harlow's like remix of Fergalicious? Oh, that one song. Uh, <laughs> it kind of slaps, but it's also kind of cringy at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Like when I first heard the beat, I was like, damn, that kind of mm. slaps. And then after a little bit, you're like, like when you actually listen to the song, you kind of sit there like, uh, it's kind of cringy, mm. but it flies right now on the dance floor. I was kind of surprised when I got such a good response the first time I played it, to be honest. I feel like it's this, right? When it first started, uh, like that little clip came out of the chorus. Yeah, the chorus is on Twitter. Yeah, that's where I first saw it too. I'm not gonna lie to you, I had that Twitter clip on repeat, just blasting from this. Like yeah, I, I was repeating that too, man. Twenty four no seconds, and then I got the hype. So hype on that, right? I knew all the moves. The L, like what? I don't know how to spell, but you know, yeah. I was doing the dance. I saw him doing the dance. And yeah, where he throws up the little <laughs> bell L. Yeah. <laughs> And then the rest of the song came out. I was like, oh, like I thought like that was like the lowest hype in the song. And then the rest of the song was going to be even crazier. That's what I was thinking, too. And then it kind of wasn't. It was kind of like the chorus. The chorus kind of goes hard. though. I'm not going to lie, though. Yeah. Chorus goes hard. But then when you get to the point in the song, if you listen the whole way through where he's like, are you ready? Time. Yes, I am. Uh-huh. I'm just like. No, come on, man. No. Yeah, there's a bunch of I am's, and then when he says like when she he asked her the question, and she, and she says I am. Yeah, and then I was like, wait, 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 wait. If my girl said that to me, I'd be like, what, babe? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he says like, do you want to go to an island? She goes, I am. And like I was like, what? Your yeah, your yeah. am at what? <laughs> That's not a question. <laughs> it's yeah. I don't know, man. There's just parts of that song like I'll definitely play like the first like chorus, maybe the first verse of it yeah but by the second cor- by the time the chorus comes back around i'm i'm working on getting out of that because mm-hmm. it's not gonna it'll actually kill the dance floor after a little bit now let me ask you this dj rambo when you talk about this oh i'm playing the chorus the first verse and then i'm cutting out to the next next song right so when you're playing like uh dance floors or bars or like whatever you're mixing a bunch of songs, right? Cutting songs people know together. Now, are you also working on like, I feel like composing your own shit. Like, is that the correct term for it? Or uh, do you mean like producing my own music or like, yeah, yeah I don't know or what like called. trying to like stay ahead and make my own mashups while I'm DJing live or? Well, 
okay, you explain the difference to me. Like I'm just so producing my own stuff. I am doing that. Um, producing my own music is like what I would consider like making a new song. Right, like uh, like people will say like Avicii, right? Yeah, like he's kind of like he's a producer. He produced right. his own tracks, Original, like Levels like, was his yeah. own track, etc. And that's what you mean? That's what I mean when I say Hell I'm producing. Yeah. Um, but if, if you're talking about like dance floors, mm -hmm. a lot of times that's like mashups, remixes, right. bootlegs. I'm working on actually getting into that now yeah. um, to try to build more of a following. That's a lot of producing behind the scenes. Um, live live mashups are. A little bit different. You just take parts of songs and make do with like a vocal over top. Right, right. Um, I can do that. I do do that occasionally. What do you mean uh, make do with a vocal over top? So you can find like an instrumental or like uh, eight bars. So that's kind of like one, two, three, right. four. It's one bar and just eight of them together um, of like drums or like the mm. chorus and find a vocal for another song in the same key yeah um like people used to do and i just happen to have like a uh version of it now that i've downloaded that i don't have to do live anymore but people used to do no hands over top of levels mm. so you would take like the levels instrumental and then put in the vocal for no hands over top yeah yeah yeah. no i know exactly and people saying, do yeah. that live right and you can do that live but i mean that's just there are a lot more can go wrong than yeah. right with that, so it's a lot of practice. Mm. I know what you're saying. They're like, they're like, you know, and then they're like, clip this, and that comes in, right? Yeah. And then you know, they're like, okay, that's enough of this, and they, whoosh, yeah, you know, basically, yeah. DJ Rambo, I tell you this, not. Um, first of all, your go-to song was like Fergalicious and something else you said. Uh some Flow Rider, maybe. Flow Rider. Why is it not like Shakira, like Hips Don't Lie? It depends. Um, Hips Don't Lie definitely is a song that gets a great response. Oh, yeah. Um, but it gets a great response at the right time. Mm, I mean, the you right can't, time. Yeah, I love this yeah. timing. See, I never thought about that. Yeah, you can't guys. just throw um, Shakira in there randomly. Because uh -huh. if you throw it in randomly, that's a different style when you really think about it. Um, it from like pop, it's got more of the Latin side. Oh, yeah. A little bit more of that. Take that yeah, you know how it goes. <laughs> I know. <dude. laughs> but yeah, so that's why that one's more of a mm. go to in a specific moment. Okay. You know why I, I, I think I chose the wrong career path? Because music I've always loved. I played drums when I was little, I can dance. And then, like, I have like. On my playlist, when I used to put music on my phone, now it's just all content, right? All these devices are just storage devices. <laughs> I don't enjoy life from any of them, except the internet and Instagram. Gotcha. No music on any of these phones. It's, a, it's actually a sad, sad life I lived. Oh, dude, my, my phone and my computer is all music. Not even gonna lie. Yeah. But when I used to have music, I had one track for every type of person. Not That's pretty me. sick, actually, and pretty talented, too, to find a track for every single person. Well, I have, like, a pretty good array of friends, so I was like, okay, if I'm ever in this situation, I need at least three three tracks to keep these type of people appeased, and then I just learned, okay, if you just keep one just data point for every type of person, like, they're going to be pissed this whole time. Like, something's playing, like, to the windows, and then the next song is like... Did you get your pickup truck? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, ba ba ba, And everyone's like, oh, yeah. And then like, I was like, yeah, that, fuck all you guys, you know? <laughs> Man, that's that's basically DJing is picking people out. Mm -hmm. Every time you walk in a bar, you're, you're scoping out, okay, this person in this back corner likes yeah. this song. Oh, that girl over there is going to jam to this style. And then you just try to make do and cut, get in and out of each mm -hmm. genre and touch everybody in the room. So what's the difference between, uh, like, uh, like you know, the middle of PA versus Philly? What songs can you... Country. Eat? Yeah, country. Country music. You never playing country music down here? Dude, if you play country music in Philly, <laughs> how do you think that would go? Let's be honest here. <laughs> and playing country in Philly, you might get chased out of Philly. Not even, like, a, a little bit? Not even like a, like some people that have done like a crossover. I can't remember. I've who did. done um, Florida, Georgia Line, and Nelly songs uh -huh. at Great American. Okay, that's probably the closest <laughs> that that would get to flying. You're saying when you say Great American, you're saying Great American Pub. It's a, yeah, it's in Contra Yeah, Contra Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's only like nineteen. That's ten even, to nineteen. Yeah, yo, even nineteen minutes or nineteen miles is yeah. like. Uh, Still different, like a uh, hundred miles yeah, in reality. From Philly. <laughs> That's probably about the closest you can get to Philly and country will work. <laughs>
Isn't that crazy? Just that little bit of. It's. I mean, you're ta- you're talking seventy six here though. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be anywhere from twenty minutes to forty minutes mm-hmm. of difference in what they're gonna hear. Oh man, it's crazy. Yo, let me let me ask you this. Do you have any like DJ gods? Like you're like, oh, this guy is doing the coolest shit, dude. Like, who's gods like, or like really dope DJs that I, like I, I like to listen to on daily and follow. Or no, like this do. guy is like I really admire this guy. Um, so definitely like Jazzy Jeff's a classic. Okay. G- DJ, uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff. Um, Vice, Vice mm-hmm. is pretty cool, and then you got a bunch that i like to follow and that i take like some inspiration from dj digital dave he's out he's actually in pittsburgh um he kills it right um deville he's another somebody like a lot of djs people probably don't know uh they don't but guess what yeah with the power of post editing i'll put their faces right yeah deville's in them so a lot of the vegas djs are out out there pretty pretty dope uh jay espinosa Mm. he does some insane scratching he's really cool um yeah those guys like they're all dope djs i like to listen to a follow I, f- I feel that now you say scratching this is like uh do you know the history of scratching i do know a little bit of the history yeah. of scratching i saw a documentary somewhere but do you scratch a little bit um i've got some pretty big opinions on scratching to be honest oh um, let, let's hear about it man tell tell us on the bobcast uh so i like scratching to a point okay. um i feel like scratching can be really dope um, and it can add flavor to the song, mm-hmm. but there's DJs anymore who just scratch to scratch. Um, and what I mean by that is like, they aren't adding to the song. They're actually taken away from it yeah. by scratching. Um, so like you got a packed dance floor and now the DJ just starts to juggle a beat. Um, juggling the beat is not playing through the track. So it's like kick drum and then kick drum and then kick drum, and kick, kick drum yeah. or like piano, 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 piano. And it's like, at that point you're just kind of taken away because if you're on the dance floor and you're grinding on your girl exactly. and then he starts doing that, that's going to throw off all the rhythm, thing, yeah. the whole rhythm. So I like it to add to it. Um, I do what's called like baby scratches and in on beat. Song, in transition. In transition. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. yeah. I yeah. Get you, I get but you. I try not to take away from the song. I feel like yeah. a lot of DJs anymore and other DJs might think it's really cool, yeah. but the regular person on the dance floor who's just there to drink and dance is not going yeah. to understand the, art behind what that dj mm. just did yeah yeah that's a very like yo bro have you ever used the uh, um gold digger oh yeah okay good yeah, that was like uh mine and <laughs> jam remember yeah yeah that was our jam back in the day dude yeah i still play it man so it's still, still slap still Some sl- like that's why music is so cool because it's like forever you know i have not even written close to a joke that's like a forever joke but like uh some songs they can just be forever. They can definitely be forever. Joke. Um, yeah. there's other ones though. Like I'm so glad we're out of that six nine little pump air man. Those Dude, songs were six nine is terrible. Back, uh, his his music's probably in the past. Now I don't think it's gonna come back to what it was. You didn't like it? It was one of the worst areas of music. I swear. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw it out. It was one of the worst like produced music, and oh, it was just so bad. You didn't like uh. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Gucci Such gang. a dumb song. Such a dumb song. Uh, and I'll never understand why people really like that. Probably just because it was easy to know the chorus too. Yeah, yeah, it was catchy too. But there was like this older fellow feller at my work, who like um, he had like a couple kids. They were all going to college, but he was like the purchasing manager, and he was just like hurt, got wit like wind of the song, like he heard. And he's like, his kids were like singing around the house. And he was like, yo, Bavik, tell me about this song. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Like, it's by this guy named Little Pump. Little Pump. <laughs> <laughs> Little Pump. Yeah, man. Oh, what a, oh man. That song was just. I, I'm so glad I don't even have to play that anymore. I don't even try. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, I, I see. Uh, I, um, do you have, like, would you ever play, like, DJ, like, a hard, like, a hard rock place? Like, have you I have. Played? I actually have. Okay. I can DJ rock, yeah. Rock's actually pretty fun to DJ. Yeah. It's more of a challenge, um, but there's so many classic rock songs that um, in a lot of rock songs all use similar chords or a similar drum pattern that you can definitely make it work. I would lo- like, you know what gets me wet about the 
top of DJing is like those large EDM festivals, right? Yeah, yeah. And You're talking like uh, not even like Coachella, but like um, Foreverland or whatever they're called. Ultra, Tomorrowland. Yeah, here I might even have a list of what they're called. Hey, I mean, yeah, like Ultra, oh, for Music Fest, um, EDC. EDC, that's the one in Los Angeles. Electric Vegas, Daisy, right? yeah, Electric Daisy's yeah. out in Vegas. Like, like, dude. Do you ever okay so okay, okay so before we get to that here since you're the soberest one here you take a note of that note but like um do you ever go to these places like have you ever gone to one of those I've shows? never been to one of those right. big festivals I have seen like Tiesto live that? and stuff I would love to get to the level where I'm uh, a producer known enough to get into one of those yeah yeah for sure the thing is is like the top of comedy is like dryer's done. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was your doorbell for a minute. I'm like, wait, you don't have a doorbell. Clean clothes here on the Bobcast, DJ Rambo. Tomorrow I'm have a baby on Leon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, uh, like if you, oh man, I'm, I might like, see. That's the problem with the Bobcast. It's just one big rabbit hole. But let me see if I can just try to figure out where I was. Uh, but like, uh, cause that dryer always fucking gets me. <laughs> Yeah, never always, fails or reliable back there. Yeah, she's like, eh, I don't know, where was I talking? <laughs> My ADHD has really proven on this podcast. <laughs> People are going to be like, yo, can someone get this man Adderall? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but it is what it is. What what can you do, right? Nothing, really. Yeah, so like, if, if like, so that, that like headlining, or not even headlining, just being one of their, but I guess I, Ideally, headlining one of those concerts, right? For like, sure. To me, like beyond comedy, beyond even being like a rock star or whatever, that like so, like that's incredible. Like, is it like I consider that the top of like producing? Is that what like is that top? In I would I would consider that the top in my head. Yes, yeah, is, yeah. is getting to be headline. You're in comedy. In the, yeah. Is that what you want to kind of do? Or that's no? where I want to get to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. I mean, you can be honest with me if that's not like, you know. No, that's so actually many... where I want to go. Like, yeah. um, like I produce Future Bass, which is like Elenium, Dabin, yeah. um, Said the Sky, like that style. And that's popular now. And I love that style of music. And I would love to like get to one of those shows and be doing that there. Dude, so what I'm saying is why I asked if you ever been to one. Because when you even think about trying to get to that level. You got to think about like the light show too. That's on you, right? Oh, uh, for sure. Now they they do hire people to do that for you, right. but you, you work with them, yeah. Yeah. So you, have you ever like that's what I'm saying? Like, um, what gets me excited about just being at the bottom of my shit, right? Because ideally that's where I am, just at the bottom of whatever fucking multiple shits I'm doing. Like you asked about Jewel Boy before we started. Killed I killed and loved me inside because in <laughs> reality I worked like a whole year on that, and overall I think I like 300 views. Just we could all that's the- yeah, that's where I am with producing right now. Like I'm at like the bottom. Like I, I yeah. average probably like three to five hundred listens on my tracks, but no, for mine it was like throttled. Like um yesterday I posted a story of me kicking my skateboard with laptops in it. And I said like unemployment or something. Yeah, we that's all the that. most views ever. Seven hundred views. Whoa. Right? The most. Yeah. In my whole life. But like things I've worked hard for every day hustling. Dude, I mean, it's it's really how it is. So, I mean, it's like, I don't, it's the grind, man. I, I feel like it's a grind. That's really what it but is. But what is throttle? Like, no, it's the algorithm. It's the Some, algorithm. Something too. is throttling me. Like one, like the next one I posted today. Like I swear to God, like I'll tell you not, dude. Let's look at what it is. Okay, I had that one, and then today I uh, posted the story off the Bobcast. Yeah. And um, of like Nick from yesterday. Only 133. You know what I mean? It's not going to go anywhere. Like, that's going to be the most. Like, 200 maybe. It's definitely algorithms. And algorithms can be a real pain at the same time. Yeah. Because you got these people now buying followers and stuff and up in there, buying views and whatnot. And that throws off the algorithm, yeah, I feel yeah. like. I too. was even creeping on your shit yesterday or actually today. Uh, when did you get all those likes from me? I think today. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was today. <laughs> I was like, oh, look, Vivek's on. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, some of that shit I've never even seen. You know? I was like, yeah. It's, it's crazy. I mean, I've. I try to like look at your profile because I know you've been doing a lot yeah. of moves with like this, but it's hard. this it's cast not over in there. Your face, you know. Yeah, no, and it's not in like uh, I think Instagram just redid it where you can like favorite who you want to see uh, all the time and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I did see that. Kind yeah, of. and it, that's just gonna make it even harder now. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't you stop putting so much fake shit in my shit in the first place? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, why I mean, you give my homies from the jump. 
and now yeah, like who I'm following. Like I want to see more, of like, <laughs> like in real time, like what they're posting. Because I mean, I could be following somebody, and they've posted something today, but I'm seeing something from like seven days ago. All of a sudden, on my timeline, I'm like, what? What yeah, is yeah, going yeah. on? Here? And then it makes you look fucking creepy, DJ Rambo. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It really oh, does. Oh, why is Bob? Why is Bob liking this shit today? You know <laughs> it's, I mean? it's all good. I mean, we know uh, people have done that. And gone and creeped on people that they like or that they're trying to hit yeah. on back in college and yeah. stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but see, the thing is, I'm okay with them figuring it out, right? Sometimes you want them to figure it sometimes out. Sometimes I do. But sometimes I just want to like it in the mass of the liking. Yeah. Like, I'm in the herd. You know? No, I'm not the outlier. Like, I just saw this, like, seven days later, and I'm just trying to, here you go. <laughs> and the person's just like, who the hell is this? Like, <laughs> I want to be, be in the herd and be okay, you know? Oh, I feel that, man. Yeah. It's safer in the herd. Exactly. Oh, man. Mm. Yo, so, like, I was, we we're going back to those, like, huge, like, that's the, like, the pinnacle or whatever. Yeah, yeah. In my sense, in my sense. Uh, because I, like, will sit there and watch those whole concerts just in my bed. Because the fucking, like, when they, the crowd control, dude. I've always, uh, you you remember, like, high school math, like a sine wave? Yeah. Right? So, to me, it's, like, um, I call it rowdy crowd theory. I, I think I'm the one that's going to pioneer this thought. And this is going to be my one aid to theorism you know what i mean <laughs> as an engineer this is my contribution to theorism yeah this will make me a doctor and it's like write a whole theory on it like a whole thesis I, and everything i think so and i got a base like i do my comedy based off those headliners at those edm shows what i've learned is like they come in no matter so you come in um for us it has to just be like static like hello because we're human right we're not a yeah. sound Right. So, but what you guys can do anything, you guys can start heavy. You guys can dead the whole gra- crowd, like light it out, black it out, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but then it goes like this, right? So, a sine wave or a cosine, maybe. I forget which is which. Clifford is actually supposed to look all this shit up, the fish. <laughs> but slacking over there. He can't. Well, he. But uh, like, you want to give like positive jokes, positive energies, right? Yeah. It's almost like. Uh, just like a joke about like, you know, I, I'm not like too funny. So this is the problem. Uh, I don't really know which jokes are positive and negative, but like a positive joke could be like, uh, like, oh, the weather is like, ch- yeah, some, something that's like not as offensive or something, you know what I mean? Mother nature like okay. is getting like, uh, like inconsistent dicking, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like kind of funny, kind of cute. And then you want to bring them in with like, oh, my girlfriend you know, uh, I hope she doesn't get pregnant because then we'd have to get an abortion, right? And then people are like, ooh, see, that's the lower part, yeah. right? Then you're just like, just kidding. And they're like, ah. You got to bring it back up. Okay. Right. It's like the rise and fall of a song. Right. right, like right, that right. Yeah, I feel it. Exactly. Well, the whole concert, right? Uh, positive and negative energy, but you never want to tiptoe underneath the zero line because then that means they hate you. Yeah. They're like, oh, right? So you want to go up and down as many intervals as you can for the set you have. And then they leave. The, what that all equals is tired. Like, when people leave good EDM concerts, they're exhausted. Sure, they did Molly. They did all this other shit. Just the, just the, <laughs> it's a, you know yeah. I mean? Up and downs, up and downs, up and downs. And I'm like, exhaustion is what brings them back. It's exhaustion and it's also the memories too. I think I think people closely associate those types of ups and downs. Remember what happens at those concerts? Oh, for sure. I mean, come on, dude. How many people are like fucked up versus not fucked up? I mean, they might be like that, but it's still. Um, if I'm taking Molly at one of these events, <laughs> I can't imagine remembering it. Is that that's actually gone down from what I understand? That's not even as popular now at those events. Um, I don't know, but like now people but, are getting yeah. like too woke. Okay, just understand. People are not getting. <laughs> people are getting less fun. You're an old soul. Remember, just remember what fun. I used to dude, be. Oh, that's why I'm doing this whole podcast trash. <laughs> I'm trying to teach the youth what fun used to be. Good old school fun. Old school fun is DJ just Rambo. some crazy 90s stuff. 90s fun, okay? Oh man, yeah, but no, I think people go back for. <laughs> I think I do think people go back for the memories at some point yeah. too. Well, at some point, if you that would like, so if you're going back for the memories, right? That means when you were originally there. You're probably getting trashed, right? More than likely. Yeah. So those original ones, you don't remember, dude. You just come out wearing those fucking bracelets. Oh, peace, love, happiness, guys. All that. <laughs> That's all you remember. Like, I had a brother. Uh, uh, like, he worked at my family's Dairy Queen. 
And then, uh, like, I grew up with him and everything. And then he went to this, like, his first EDM concert. And then he came back to, like, Dairy Queen, like, after, like, maybe, like, a whole week after. Like, the come down had still not oh, come off of him. That's a long, <laughs> that's a long ride then. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it had to be, like, a couple days or something. But, like, still, he was lit. And he just had, like, these bracelets on. He's like, you just go up to everyone, put them on. They yeah, go. they train and him I, and I everything. Like, I get it. I get it. I was like, I love it. But you have to... <laughs> get back just, into reality at some uh, point. <laughs> serve the fucking ice cream, dog. <laughs> they want ice cream. They don't want the bracelets. <laughs> he didn't last too long. My mom fucking was getting distasted with him. Oh, I mean, if he was still still on his game after a week, let's be real. <laughs> Dude, let me like, yo, this is completely off topic, but you might get a kick out of this. Have you? What was your first kind of jobs like in reality? Like pushing carts at a grocery store. Pushing That's carts. Serious. And then uh, where? Uh, grocery store down in Lancaster. Which one? What's his name? Darren Camps. Darren Camps. Nobody knows except the Amish in Lancaster. It's not even there anymore. Oh, well, hopefully they got good fucking money, maybe. No, they got bought out by a Giant. Giant! Respect. Yeah, we all know Giant now. Yeah, Giant. Uh, if you want another one of these Bud Lights, feel free, okay? Oh, I'm all right. Man. I know, I know, I know. It was my host. My hostness. I feel because that. We Appreciate to, it, Bob. We, went all, we all went to Penn State. We the greatest hosts, all of us collectively. <laughs> Those tailgates were definitely the greatest yeah. service at. Man. Nothing like a Penn State tailgate, man. Yeah, Yo, you want to hear the craziest thing about Penn State? For sure. Because we love Penn State, right? I don't have to even drink before I even tell you this. <laughs> so I had a, um, a comedian on. His name is Vishnu Vaka. And he's an older comedian. He's like in his mid 40s and since his name is vishnu and my real dad's name is vishnu i felt like a real draw to him gotcha not even for his comedy he's very funny but just like um just like from my loins i was like father daddy <laughs> you know what i mean the kid again all of a sudden yeah so like uh, uh i meet this guy and i have him on he went to ohio state right uh. but i don't hear like he goes to ohio state until we're like we're talking yeah. It's like I didn't like even know like he went to college here, so he's like I went to Ohio State and I was like oh that's what's up, and I was like yeah Penn State hates you and like <laughs> uh, the thing about Ohio State is like we know is like their their beef is with Michigan just like how Temple thinks uh, like they have beef with us but we're like fuck you Temple right uh, they're like little kids we just yeah go like Temple like still goes to like college games with signs that say like fuck you when it's like not us. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, but like that's what we are. To it's like Ohio your Super Bowl State. whenever we come around. Yeah, yeah. So he was explaining that, and he was like, he was like, "You're whiteouts." Even that, like, well, he was like, when we come in waving those white flags, it's like we're already saying like we surrender. Like that's how <laughs> they take the mentality. That's an intense way to take it, though. Dude, I was like, <laughs> what? He was like, yeah, you know, we are rocking in, and you guys are saying we're losing. <laughs> I, I like, would say, though, I would say we're probably bigger competition anymore than Michigan. For I them. know, but, you know, that's our ego speaking. That is like, our ego speaking. <laughs> that's our ego speaking for sure. <laughs> but the way he was just like, the white flags. I was like, oh, no. That's I would have a- never thought of that oh, either. Dude, but like, you know, when you see it in movies, you're like, oh, oh. I was like, no. I was like, that's, no. But then again, they do the blackouts, and we can't even tell if there's people in the stadium. With- it doesn't matter. A black a black sea is like way scary. Like, when you see like a white, uh, do you ski or snowboard? Yeah. Yeah, so you go out there and see some fresh powder. You're like, wow. If you go out there and see the whole fucking shit is black, you're like, Fuck. That's true. But it doesn't translate well on TV as well as the way it out does. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. But, like, I'll, look, just their mentality it's, is years of Ohio State just coaching. It's probably just getting prepared for it there. It's just, like, ingrained in that culture anymore. Penn State is coming up this weekend. Uh, just <laughs> bunch of L's, bunch of L's. They're, like, all in the locker room. Bunch of L's. We are L's. I was like, dude, no, no. <laughs> That's insane, though. That's an interesting way to think. I am, <laughs> I like, I'm actually kind of floored. Like, oh, I know. but it was my dad telling me, so I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't really say anything, anything back. <laughs> just had to take it for him at that point. I was cucked. I was cucked right here. Just, ah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, and, and with that, we're just going to move on to the next topic at that point. <laughs> Dude, I was like, 
it crushed me, but what are you gonna do? Ah, uh, nothing, man. I mean, it's until still a rivalry. Him, like until we beat them inconsistently. <laughs> <Yeah>. Consistently, <laughs> I guess so. we got nothing. To, I hate that. Like Penn State lost like that one L to fucking uh, Temple. We had like a seventy year fucking. Oh, that was rough. That I was know. brutal. And then they thought that they were better than us. It's like. It's like they have one win out of like how many times we played. That. No, but DJ Rambo, they kind of are better than us because they did take that L. I mean that W over us a while ago. Not I know, recently. but like we had seventy some years. That's true. Seventy. If I was like uh, porking your mom for seventy years, <laughs> and then you came and porked my mom just once, my mentality would be trashed. Oh man, I don't know. I still view Temple as like. Baby, like brother, sister, you know. Who's a ba- Who's the babyest? Temple They're the baby. Temple's the baby. Rutgers. Oh, I don't even consider Rutgers part of the family. Let's be real. Yeah. They're just like some outcast who thinks that they fit in. They're just some trash, right? They don't even fit in. Like it's bad when you can get the agreement from Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan that they don't like you. When you get all three of those on the same side, that's a rough go. No one likes Rutgers. Not even Rutgers likes Rutgers. I, yeah, have you seen their student turnout? They don't even show up to support their own teams. I think, like, junior year, I got season tickets. Who? And then I was like, why did I get them the first two years? <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. It's it's definitely something to experience. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also a pain to get the season tickets nah, when you're a student dude, you at times. you just wake up early, just literally 10 minutes before that. You just have the page ready. I've never had an issue. You've never had an issue? If I didn't wake up early and I just wasn't like, ready, you know what I mean? I even did it like one year off my phone. I did one year off my laptop and the next year my senior I did. Year. I think I did did off my phone too. Yeah. I feel you on that. Senior year, you're just already like, all right, it's the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, senior year, I went to every home game, but I don't remember one. That's and, that's the way to do it, though. And I didn't spend any home game with any of my friends. Like, it was like always like we were walking to the stadium. I was like, guys, I gotta hit the bathroom. And just like they were just like, okay. And then it's like we're all blacked. So I was just like, <laughs> send it up somewhere in the student yeah, section. Yeah, like he's. They're just like <laughs> eventually like, what are we waiting for? And someone's like, some girls probably just like, oh, let's just go. We gotta get that seat. Ninety percent chance. Back, and just like, we're <laughs> Where'd they point. all go? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd they all go? Are they server here somewhere? <laughs> and then they, you just hear that. Yo, let's go. And you're like, all right, got to get out there. <laughs> got to get out there for the for kickoff. Let's go. <laughs> Let me ask you this. So the thing I love about DJ, DJ Rambo, is uh, it's like your character. See, just like how I have an act on stage. Oh, my mother is FaceTiming me. Oh, yeah. I can't answer that. It would be too much. <laughs> Or maybe I can. Mama Bob on the <laughs> cast. She's actually gonna come on the podcast. Is she? Yeah, uh, we're gonna. Uh, the Mexican pizza is coming back. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, Isn't so that because of Doja Cat? Do <laughs> you know? <laughs> yo, so Doja Cat. Yo, Do- Doja Cat already knows. I talked to her about this already through the Bobcast. But like, she knows. Like, I respect her a whole lot. And uh, because I remember, like, when the uh, like the Mexican pizza left. They're like, it's going to leave Friday. So I went Thursday and I was like, I, I drove home to Philly to Lansdale, 45 minute drive. I went there. I was like, mom, last Mexican pizza on me. And it was like a surprise. And I called her and she was so hyped. And then I got through the drive through and they're like, we already stopped it. What? That's a rip off, man. They say Friday should go through Friday. I wanted to bang my head <laughs> through a spike, my guy. But then Doja Cat did all her great work on TikTok and through her marketing and the power of she, I think she's Indian, too, so she really felt felt it. Yeah. And she brought it back, and me and my mom are going to eat Mexican pizzas for the first time back on the Bobcast. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah, That's the way to do it. And we're just going to eat, like, two Stomach will regret it later. <laughs> Whoa, dude. The thing is, she's vegetarian, so we, oh, okay, eat, okay. we eat vegetarian Mexican pizzas. Like, I eat meat. Is that a thing? Yeah, with refried beans instead of beef. Okay. So that's the way I grew up eating uh, uh, Taco Bell. But uh, I started eating meat in college. Okay. Yeah, so then I started the beef, but I was like, with my mom, 
I just go Gotta back. keep it respectful, you know. I guess. just like it would just be like uniform. I yeah. have like OCD. Yeah. You know, if I'm eat, out here eating beef and she's eating beans, it's like something's off. I feel that. Yeah. It's family thing, man. Got guys, gotta keep it up with fam. But what I was saying is about like the character of like uh, um, a DJ. Yeah, it's like it can almost be a character where a comedian. Oh, it totally is. Yeah. So have you ever thought about like no no like 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 a marshmallow? Like, yeah. That is like a character. Like um, Stevie Okay, Yeah, he is a character now, but he's just like that old Asian man character. But that took o- over time. But have you ever thought about like becoming like a character? Like so yeah sure DJ Rambo like. Uh, what is DJ Rambo's character? Just like besides, like, do you wear gold chains on stage? Wear gold chains. Um, I'm big into chains now. Yeah. Uh, building my own collection of them right now. Oh hell yeah! Getting some blinged out. Like I got more jewelry probably now. Uh. So it's like DJ Rambo, like a mafia gangster. More like a cocky asshole. Cocky asshole. <laughs> but where does that cocky asshole grow into? Uh, grows into probably just like the. Uh, cocky dance floor general can control the dance floor mm. the way he wants it to. Do you like at so you say general? So this is just uh, his quick thought. Like you say general, this is what's coming out. Like I just a war guy. So like, do you ever imagine just wearing paint? I have dressed as Rambo before a DJ. Okay, but was that on Halloween? Halloween? Okay, what's well, Halloween? Oh yeah, yeah, because Rambo, right, yep. right, yep. right. Wow, see, that's how brown I am. I don't even think about shit like that. It's actually when I met Coop. um, That's kind of where the nickname started. Well, you know, Coop is a Rambo himself. (laughs) Yeah, I met them all at a party in State College, and nobody could remember each other's names, and I was just in their phone as Rambo, I think, and that's where it started. Coop (laughs) always goes down to the guy that has the most unaware, like, spatial awareness. (laughs) You know what I mean? Big guys, when they party... Zero spatial awareness. They do not have spatial. It's still true to the dance floor to this day. And when you like, do you ever see like shit going down? And do you ever cut like the party and be like, "Oh shit, we gotta, we gotta, yo, protect that bitch or that dude." Yeah, if there's fights, I gotta cut the music. Um, so I security knows. Um, and we'll come over and break it up depending mm-hmm. on the venue. Each venue typically has their own way of handling it. Mm. When you say we break it up, you don't break up shit. Um, I've. Taking somebody out before from the oh, bar. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it it really depends, um, because then it comes down to a whole bunch of insurance stuff uh, with right. that venue. You're not allowed. So you're not allowed to. You're not part of the union. Right. I'm not allowed to do it at some bars. I have taken a girl who was like wandering back in the kitchen, just escorted her gently out of a bar. Yeah. Um, and sweet chim music during the fucking. <laughs> what happens outside is well beyond our control. <laughs> But if there's if there's a fight, yeah, there's def- definitely pulling down music. Um, DJ to prom this past weekend and had to make an announcement that the kids had to stop crowd surfing. Um, or else oh, I'd they're have still to... doing that, kids? A prom? Yeah. yeah. Crowd surfing? Yeah, man. They were crowd surfing. They almost broke the stage I was on. They were great kids, so real hype crowd. Youth is still holding up. They are Proud holding up. Proud of you, up. you youth. Congratulations. They are holding up to a T. But, yeah, that was... Like, I mean, it really depends on the place. I would, I generally would let most of it go, yeah. um, except for fights, because then we're getting into potentially damaging equipment if somebody falls into mm. it, seriously hurting himself, which could then become a liability on me, et cetera. Wow. So I let it go for the most part, though. You're such a millennial, dude. <laughs> just a little bit. Because I'm a Gen Z, and you're just acting like a millennial. <laughs> Can you stop? Like, we're just crowd surfing, DJ Rambo. Hey, man, that wasn't even on me. I was going to let him keep doing it, but the teacher said no. You're just crowd surfing, DJ Rambo. Stop being like I would have crowd surfed. Do you still use an aux cord anywhere in your career still? Yeah, I mean, it, some things still require an aux cord. Do you think kids are of today's youth are going to still remember an aux cord? Probably not. Phasing out pretty quick, actually. Dude, you know what the aux cord reminds me of? Long car trips, drives no. to Penn State. <laughs> mm, kind of, um, but it reminds me of like uh, you ever seen Finding Nemo? Yeah. The Disney or whatever yeah. Pixar or DreamWorks, that covered the top three. Ah, uh, they're like they had those seagulls that go like oh oh oh, and like. When I was in like in a frat in college, and people would be like, "Can I get the ox, 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 ox?" 
basically college. yeah that is how that would go in college oh my gosh one time i had someone asking me for an aux so much and i was like so hammered and i was like i'm playing music and he was like just give it to me i need the aux just give me the aux bro i need the aux, aux. <laughs> i want to play my song yeah dude and it was just like <laughs> this kid Love to play fucking just Christmas songs at Why? all times of the year. That's like getting requested for like Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas. Yeah, exactly. That's oh. the song. That's all you wanted to play. So I said, if you want to play the song here, and he plugged in his phone, and I just cut the aux cord with a fucking scissor. <laughs> <laughs> now that is savage. That is savage. You just cut the aux cord. Oh. Yeah, dude. I was I was not having it with him. That's pretty brutal. Sorry, I had to check my phone. It kept going off. No, no, yeah. You got anything going on? Nah, that's just Eagle, Eagles uh, draft alerts. When does your draft start, dude? Uh, draft starts at... Wait, do you have to be, like, active in your draft? No, no. This is actually the NFL draft. Yeah. This is the actual NFL draft oh, that, oh. that I'm getting alerts for. Oh, when does that start? Eight. Eight? And what are we expecting? like? Uh... For the birds to be disappointed. Uh -huh. When is our first pick? Uh, first pick uh, is 15 or 18. I forget if we traded it, but right in that range. Oh, who's the first draft pick this year? Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville Jaguars. Who just lost Urban Meyer. Mm. Well, fired Urban Meyer. <laughs> fired Urban Classic Meyer. Classic Ohio State coach. <laughs> That's where I recognized him from, dude. Let's see. You like flowers? I was going through your Facebook, and you got a lot of pictures of flowers. Oh, uh, I buy Rebecca f uh, flowers every single week. Wow! Yeah. What a yeah, lucky every lady. single week, I get uh, the one guy at Giant thinks I piss her off like all the time. Wow! <laughs> I might have to delete that out because you know a bunch of men are gonna be in the fucking shitter. Holy <laughs> crap! Hey, don't no, show, don't show your girls that, guys. Yeah, no, no, Rebecca, <laughs> keep them away. Very lucky lady. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Yeah, every single week I buy her flowers, and uh, for Christmas I bought her a membership to Longwood Gardens. Does she really like flowers? Is that what yeah? It is? She likes flowers. okay. Yeah, she likes flowers, and it's I just like to do it for her because it makes her happy. So happy wife, happy life. Oh my god. You guys have any interest in getting pets, you two? Or do you guys have Yeah, pet? no, we're going to um, get a dog. Um, right now, we're working on getting a house first. Our apartment uh, in their contract says we can't have dogs. Mm -hmm. And we're both allergic. She's very allergic um, to cats. I'm slightly allergic to cats because uh, of my asthma. But I'm allergic to cats, yeah. too. So we want to get a dog, but it's, it's in our lease mm -hmm. that we can't. So we'll wait until we get a house. Yeah. But the housing market is Trash. a mess. Dude. So that's waiting right now. Do you remember those kids in elementary school who are like, no, it's real. I was one of them. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I swear I was one of them too. I was like, it has to Jeff be Hardy. real. Do you remember him? Dude, Jeff Hardy. I loved Ray Mysterio. Yeah. Like Jeff Hardy, Ray Mysterio, they did physics. So it's just like some of that shit had to hurt. So, oh, yeah. No, I um, so I've DJed um, actual of wrestling events like that yeah um, yeah it actually is plywood like stacked on top of each other uh -huh. and that hurts if you land the wrong way dude i know they all practice falling so guys don't just go jumping on plywood yeah you gotta <laughs> learn how to fall i know it, it hurts as someone who snowboards I, I know how to fall it hurts a lot when you land on that plywood that bang is like the actual plywood so tonight it could be over right um, yeah, and the alert I got was saying Harden was going nuts, so. What do you mean, like nuts? Like, scoring-wise. Like yeah, having a good it game. just started, right? I've, it should be probably. It started at 7.30. Yeah. Yeah, so we're still, like, in the, maybe the first or. Probably second quarter, if I Oh, okay, else. okay, let's let's start wrapping this up then. No, you're good. I mean, I'm just, off the top of my head, if, if Harden's going nuts, good sign for the Sixers. They could end it tonight. Yeah, but you know, like, okay, so it's like, if the Sixers win, they're gonna end it, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's over. It's not like it's. I, I have like such a feeling in my gut that's going seven. It has to be. And if I was a betting man, which I'm not, because the Eagles made me lose too many monies. <laughs> go uh, birds. <laughs> go, go birds. <laughs> uh, the Eagles made me lose too many monies, so I'm not like a physically betting man. But mentally, on this one, mentally calculating this one, I'm betting a hundred percent. You guys can. Uh, Fact check me, whatever it is, because this is going to, I'm not going to cut this. The fucking uh, Raptors are going to win tonight, and then when that, the fucking Eagles are going to, not the Eagles, the fucking Sixers are going to beat them in the, whatever, the seventh, seventh here, game. Yeah. Here in Philly. Here in Philly. That would be hype, though. Philly it fans is. would go it nuts. Is. And then we're going to 
Dude, that whole fucking uh, that parade. I'm gonna be unemployed, dude. Blacked out, beginning to end. That's if we win the finals. This is just. Oh, the, what, where does that go? Like, so okay, so I don't really understand basketball. Yeah, so. no, you're good. Um, right now we're just in like the con- uh, we're just at the start of the playoffs, so we still got like two more rounds before we'd even make the finals. So we win this game of seven, and then we'd have another team to play. Another seven. Yeah, another seven seven game series. And that's the win. And then winner of that one would go into the semis. And that's another seven. And that's another seven. Holy shit! So many. Why? Why yeah. is this like so complicated? They changed the playoff structure um, recently. Basketball has always been complicated like this, right? So, yo, you're telling me this, and now I'm not even invested in this game. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man. I'm invested to see them get through this game at least. No, 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 no. <laughs> but DJ Rambo, you don't even understand. Like this game, like, like. I, they still need to go like their two more yeah, series. They got know? a lot longer yeah, to go. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, I was like, I was getting like nervous. I was like, oh shit, I don't want, no, I don't want DJ Rambo to miss some good. No, you're good, history. you're good, you're good. And no I rush. was like, oh fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, so I, I barely know how sports work. I just did it because I went to Penn State. You know? Hey man, I figured it out post college. You're probably fine because Philly sports are some of the most frustrating sports out there. Dude, when I was gambling. The anxiety I had was unbelievable. Unmatched. It can get to you. Unbelievable, DJ Rambo. <laughs> we would be winning the whole game. Cox erect. Whole game, everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, go birds, go birds. In the last 30 seconds of the fourth quarter, losing by a thousand points oh yes oh, where, where, what happened i went to the bathroom i took a shit i did i did something <laughs> if i had that answer this the eagles would in super bowl every year <laughs> <laughs> yo you know what really killed me were you upset about doug pierce singing fired i i was i thought howie Roseman should have been fired because howie can't draft and makes the personnel choices who is howie what is his he's our general manager hmm. he's the one who drafts the players signs the players Gets the free agents. So let me explain this to you, Sir Rambo. I had some money on that last game that Doug Peterson was coaching. Oh, yeah. And in some that last run, we could have made a touchdown. We could have gone to overtime. And uh, I could have potentially – I saw confidence on that one kid. Who was our new guy, that new quarterback? Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. I saw – Hurts had been hurting me, and I saw right here, finally, you're going to unhurt me. You're going to heal me, Hurts. <laughs> Hurts is about to heal me. And then Doug fucking Peterson pulls him out, Yep. puts in this rookie. Yep, Sudfeld. The rookie took the L. The rookie took the L. <laughs> and then what happens with that L? So many Philadelphia fans lose money. <laughs> We lose money. Doug, 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 my guy. Fuck you. That's why you're on unem- uh, him. He's here. down in Jacksonville now. Fuck you. Good. Enjoy that warm weather. You don't need to be here. We don't like you. you- <clears throat> Although we'd love Doug for getting us a Super Bowl. No, that was Big Dick Nick, dude. <laughs> it was. So, what is. Do you like ice cream? Yeah. What is this blizzard right here? I'll give you three shots. You can even take your sunglasses off. And uh, let's see. If you get this blizzard, you get a thousand dollars. No one has gotten this blizzard yet. Strawberry cheesecake? No. Two more guesses. I'll give you a hint. Cracker. That's my only hint. Cracker. cracker. I said cracker. Did you hear me say cracker? I heard you say. I heard okay. you cracker. say cracker. <laughs> Basically, yeah. That's that's me for sure. I'm definitely one of those crackers. It's not supposed to be a racist. I don't take it that way. Yeah, the cracker. That looks like strawberry and bananas too. That's just no strawberry. You already said strawberry in your first one, so I can. I won't even count that as a guess again. Okay. Um. I actually have no idea. I'm. No, uh, no, no, no. Come on, you have two guesses. Two guesses. Thousand dollars. Come on. Buy yourself a new chain with a thousand dollars. I could, but the chain on mine up it's a thousand. Um, or put 
a thousand dollars for a little bit of saving account for a new chain. It's not a graham cracker. No, close. <laughs> Second guess. Bam. Cracker. Come on, you probably. Ate I don't know that many crackers. <laughs> you do. It's not. A, it's not a. You do know a cracker. You had these crackers when you were a little. Just as a child, uh, when things weren't even rough. Think about a carefree time you had. I'm like those Teddy Grams. You remember those Teddy things? Teddy Grams. That's close. That's close. I don't know if that's considered a cracker. Though. Is that a cracker? Kind, or cookie? That is a that's, cracker. That's a cracker. Yeah, it's a type of cracker. Uh, Graham cracker is a type of cracker. That's definitely a cracker. It's got the name in yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, what Teddy Graham is is a Graham cracker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get uh, a Teddy Graham. Graham oh cracker. yeah. Yeah, that it's makes the shape sense. Of a motherfucking bear. That's all they goofed Yeah, that's you. why I always thought it was like they, a cookie or they something. Goofed you, motherfucker. I'm Come not on. the. I'm, I am a blonde, so I'm not that intelligent. You got it. Come on, it's pink, white. There's some sprinkles, cracker. Come on, it's a type of cracker, cookie-ish type of thing. <laughs> oh man. Um. Come on, you got this. Come on, you got this. Nobody's gotten this yet, huh? Nobody's gotten it. Pink crackers and white. Pink and white crackers. And sprinkles. It's like a birthday cake. Almost, almost. almost. I won't, I won't, I won't take that. Almost, almost birthday cake. Come on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, cracker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Man, mm -hmm, I'm Gregor. <laughs> I'm Blizzard, so you know, and mm -hmm, Blizzard. Man, I don't even know. Tell me when you give up. I give up, man. Animal I... Cracker Blizzard. Oh shit! Yeah, those are Animal they have pink. Cracker. Damn. That's really good. You Animal Cracker, <laughs> you. <laughs> Animal crackers. Okay, yeah, I forgot there's pink animal crackers. Yeah, to be honest, dude, real talk. I had a uh, two girls get it right. Really, first try. For so real. That's they why. must have had it. No, before no, they just like sweets. They like sweets. So uh, the thing was, I said a thousand dollars, but no one gets any money. That's good. No worries. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, but damn, I would have never been able to guess that. Man. Yeah. Well, you so lost that. Perhaps to them. Yeah, well, getting on first track. Thousand fucking dollars. Uh, EJ Rambo. I'll have to go bet on the Eagles and lose some more. No, don't bet on the <laughs> Eagles. Never do that. Do you want to um, tell the Bob Nation anything where you need, they need to follow you at? Obviously, I'll yeah, for sure. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, DJ Brian Rambo. Uh, there's also a Facebook page, Brian Rambo. Um, make sure you just give those follows. If you're ever in Conshohocken, I'm likely spending a Great American. You can catch me there. All right, so I did see you were on Spotify. I mean, uh, yes. uh, uh, you are on Spotify. I am on Spotify oh, under Brian yeah. Rambo, not DJ Brian Rambo, okay. just Brian Rambo. Because I saw that you were on SoundCloud, then I was like, damn, is this guy on Spotify? So I was searching DJ yes. Rambo on Spotify. It's just under Brian Rambo. Love um, that. That's Love my producing that. name. Uh, and I do have an album coming out um, hopefully this summer. This summer. Cool. Well, the Bobcast might not be out this summer yet. But when the Bobcast does come out, we will pump that out. For sure. It'll be under oh, yeah. Brian Rambo. Awesome. Well, thank you, DJ. Thank you so much for having me, man. Yeah, man. It was a pleasure. It's always good to catch up with you. Deuces!